Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the little feeder tank. You can actually screw it right on top of the, the big tank. There's a, you'll see there's a rubber with the, the arch of the, or the grounding of the, the tank that you can put on top here. Um, but before we do that, I just want to put some hemp around the, the connector. Um, so, this is basically fibrous strands from the hemp plant. Um, I'm going to take this away first. If you come closer, I will show you what this actually is doing. Okay, so hold on to one side and turn it around all the way. Now, what these fibers are going to do, obviously they're a filler. Now, it's doing sort of similar job that plumbers type are doing. But I like using hemp because hemp has got a very unique property that you won't find with uh, normal plumber state and that is that as soon as it gets wet it expands now plumber tape is made from plastic so um, plastic getting wet stays plastic but hemp getting wet actually expands a little bit and it fills all the little nooks and crannies so it's much easier to prevent leaks by using hemp fibers. Okay, feeder tank's got two sides. Easiest way to see where the water main should come in is normally it's got a little sieve in there to prevent all kinds of particles that may be in the main water supply to actually clog up the, the floating valve inside of this. The other side, this will then be the overflow. Okay, so what we can do, lift it up, position it, and screw it in. Okay, that should be tight enough. Okay, let's quickly finish off the two uh, the overflows. I'm gonna put an elbow on there on the other side with a pipe going up. Um, the purpose of the overflow is just to uh, if there's too much pressure in the in the tank to provide a release. So I would reckon if we put about a meter or so um, as a overflow flow pipe going straight up, that should be enough. Okay, we're going to do a quick lesson in soldering copper. This is a pipe cutter. Um, I'm using two types of pipe. Uh, the half inch pipe and the, the geyser installation physically there connectors is a three quarter inch pipe. Um, so um, I've already done some of the piping um, and uh, I'm just going to quickly show you how to do solder joints and so forth. So pipe cut it very easy, you put your pipe in the position where you want to cut it, tighten the screw lightly, you see there's a sort of a blade, turn it, tighten, turn it, tighten, turn it, tighten, turn it, tighten, until it is neatly cut off. So what we're trying to do now is I'm trying to take the thick pipe and turn it into the thin pipe so that we can connect it to the water mains of the house. Okay, now I don't know if you remember in the first session I, I had some steel wool and I said I'll tell you what to do with that steel wool. Now copper oxidates. So um, if you're an architect you will call it uh, when it starts turning green, nice patina, but uh, 
Uh, we don't like it. For us, it's rust. Uh, and rust basically means that you've got bad solder joints. So the steel wool basically takes off all the rust and it helps us to get a cleaner joint when we solder. Um, I'm using flux, solder flux. Uh, yeah, really less is more. Um, don't put too much on. And uh, if you've got a cut or a nick in your hand, it will bite a little bit. So, I'm using a mica tile because it absorbs heat easily so I don't burn down everything that I work on. So on top of this wall that I'm sitting there's a, um, there's a ceiling uh, coating and obviously if I, if I solder on top of it I'm actually going to burn it. Small flame, some solder. We're heating the joint until the, the flux melts. With a dab of uh, solder that will give me a good idea when it starts flowing. And as you can see, it actually flows into the joints. Also, once again, less is more. You don't have to put lots of solder on it. The joint. That will do the trick. Okay. Leave it on the towel for a while just to uh, to uh, cool. If you're impatient like me, you can keep a bottle of water handy. Uh, it's a good joint. And that will just help it to cool down a little bit quicker. So I've already sanded down with a steel wool this side of the pipe. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to now put the, the reducer and the small piece of pipe that I've got in the reducer on top of this. Okay, so exposed pipe. This is the cold water supply. Um, now in summer it really doesn't matter that the pipe is exposed because the sun will just heat, heat up, the, up the pipe and start doing some more work with the geyser. But uh, in Johannesburg we do get um, sub-zero temperatures sometimes. So what you don't want is you don't want the water in the pipe to freeze. Well, number one will stop you from adding hot water because the water won't get to the tank but number two um, as water freezes it that basically ex expands and what quite often happens is that you get pipe bursts so the way to uh, prevent that is to um, put some insulation over the over the pipes so this is basically a a foam based uh, channel with a ceiling connector so that you can nicely and neatly put it back together again. So what you do is you measure how long you need a knife without cutting your fingers. Clips over the pipe. And then you put the 
two socks together again. In winter, this pipe won't freeze. Now we're going to do something similar for um, the hot water pipes. Um, not that they will freeze in winter, because uh, it will always hopefully be hot water from the solar system. But what we don't want to happen is we don't want to have a lot of heat loss as we actually take the, the water from the water tank to the shower or the basin or wherever you want to use the, the hot water. Just um, a quick summary what we've done. Cold water going into the feeder tank. There's an overflow that we fitted. If you look underneath here, we've got a, a stop tap. Uh, this is if you want to drain the the reservoir, uh, maybe to to replace an element or something like that, or to replace one of the um, collector tubes. Hot water coming out, um, and that's basically it. Okay, so you may remember you may remember this. Uh, copper strip that I had in the beginning. Uh, what's that one for? Okay, so you've got an electric element. Um, it's always important to make sure that if something goes wrong with the electric element and electricity actually is conducted to the water, that whoever is standing underneath a shower or touching a tap or whatever is properly protected. So one of the things that we need to do is we need to make sure that the inlet and the outlet of the of the water is uh, properly interconnected um, and earthed. So um, when I do the electrical installation, I'll talk about the earthing part. Um, what we're doing at the moment, as you'll see, I've used this strip to, to connect between the, the the input and the output. So the cold water and the warm water. Um, feet. Um, you may also notice that I've used brass screws and not uh, screws made from anything else. Remember we talked a little bit earlier about galvanic corrosion. So I can't use a steel screw on copper because it will rust through. Uh, but if I use brass which is predominantly copper um, that's okay it, it won't rust through. So, tighten that. 